What's up? Welcome into the Social Network. Been a big week. We've gotten the NFL schedule that we'll react to. Also, EA Sports College football trailer dropped today. Brev, did you get a chance to check that out? Yeah. And it looks freaking sick. Yeah, it looks really good. Uh, I didn't like that there was no Virginia Tech uh, Inner Sandman teaser, but I'm sure that'll be in the game. Uh, <laughs> get it? Because EA, it's, it's in the game. I didn't mean for it's that. In the to game. Happen. Oh, well, um, I wanted to ask you really quick before we get into the football stuff. Um, have you ever had barbecue meatballs before? Like meatballs on a barbecue, or meatballs like in a like, crock pot with barbecue sauce? That one. That one. Yeah, did you make them like you do the little uh, cocktail mm -hmm. weenie things? Yeah, but just meatballs? Yeah, I've had that. Would you say they're a common dish? I mean, I've seen them as an appetizer at like Super Bowl parties and stuff. I, I like, I don't, they're not everywhere, but I've seen them pretty okay. decently at like parties. Why? Is this a debate you're having with somebody? Just a halfway common uh, American dish, you would say. Yeah. Okay. That's it. We're, we're not, about we're not, now. we're not really breaking the ADHD allegations we got last week by starting off I that just, way. I wanted to ask somebody's opinion. I forgot to ask it before the show started. Sorry. All right. Speaking of meatballs, I guess. I don't know. There's no transition. Uh, let's just dive right into the schedule. Obviously, we talked a couple weeks ago about the opponents. Now we know the dates and time. I know you were saying, in your opinion, timing does have an impact on outcome. Care to elaborate on that? Um, yeah. So, hold on. I'm plugging in my laptop. Uh, yeah. So, I think when we get the opponent. Get in there. When we look at the opponents, um, when the season it's charging, we're good. Uh, when the season kind of and like you can you kind of know your opponents two or three years ahead of time. Do you like this thing where I'm looking at the camera more? I got my laptop yeah. over there. So okay, thank you. I have blue eyes. So um, when we look at the schedule, not the schedule. When we look at the list of opponents, you have it two or three years out. Um, so you kind of know who you're playing, but there's something about the timing element and knowing when you're when you're gonna play somebody. Um, it just kind of changes the way you predict things a little bit. I wouldn't say looking at the schedule, and maybe we'll get into this a little later. Like my record prediction has changed, but like it just it's something about it changes, and I don't I don't know why. Maybe maybe it's a little different now that I got too sucked into the fact that Kirk Cousins is my quarterback, and I looked at the primetime games, and I was like. Not that I necessarily subscribe to that narrative, but I don't know. Timing is everything, but nothing at the same time. That was incredibly deep, but that, also not at all. That's what she said. Okay. Um. So, yeah, two primetime games this year. I know a lot of people are freaking out thinking that that's like some sign the Vikings are going to be awful, but Breaking we had news. two primetime games in 2022 <laughs> and we did uh, more than fine that year. That was actually our best year in a long time. Uh, if you're mad and speaking in a general sense, if you're mad that the Vikings have two primetime games only this year, maybe consider the fact that people don't really want to watch Sam Darnold play quarterback during primetime. Yeah, that's... and the Atlanta game could get flexed if JJ's starting because that's a hell of a storyline. It could be. So and we I'm... could have more. That would be cool, I guess. But I, I'm in a general sense, I'm happy. Do I say that a lot in a general sense? I think I say that term a lot. Now that I think about it, you do say it quite often. Yeah, well, generally speaking, in a general sense, I'm kind of happy that the Falcons game is late in the season for that potential of maybe being flexed if both teams are in a playoff, uh, a little playoff position, whether on the bubble or fully inserted. Yeah. And also having the potential of McCarthy starting later in the year. I know a lot yeah. of people are picking, you know, what, like week 13, 
some people picking as early as week nine for him to maybe start. I mean, that's so there's no like, oh, here's the game you want him starting necessarily. It's it's all about how ready he is. Um yeah, I mean, taking a look at the schedule, a lot of people, again, like the opponents have been listed, but are reacting like, oh my God, this is the world's worst third place schedule. Um, I got to I gotta give props to Phil, Judd, and Dex over at Purple Daily because they made a really good point that I've been kind of sitting on for a couple of days since, it's, since the schedule's come out, which is like, if you're ever going to have just an absolute gauntlet of a schedule, which potentially this really could be, even some of the teams that were projected to beat could be pretty good. Like, like Indy, who knows what Jacksonville is going to be any year. Um, but this is the year to do it because you have McCarthy developing and hopefully it keeps us from throwing him out there before he's ready. I think to the point we've talked about already, if you're going into this year being like, you know what? My entire Vikings fandom rides on 2024. If they don't win at all, I'm done. Uh, I would say just proactively start preparing for that outcome because it's, I think this team could make the playoffs. I think a number of different things could happen. I don't think it's likely that happens, but it could. Um, it's, it's more, more than likely going to be a step back year. And that's part of the plan. Um, what do you think? Like looking at this schedule, what's realistically the worst case scenario for you as far as record or as far as situation? <laughs> Uh, I would say worst case scenario for the record, looking at the schedule, I mean, in a technical sense, it's the worst case scenario is 0-17. But if wins and losses, worst case scenario uh, is like three or four wins, probably. I don't think the Vikings will ever only win three or four games, except for, I mean, they kind of do. They do it like once every 10 to 12 years, so that they're due in that sense but um like worst case scenario your worst case scenario is jj mccarthy doesn't develop at all this year if you look away from the record but um yeah record what like three or four wins is the worst case scenario the the schedule's kind of hard but i i don't know i don't i'd agree with you i think the worst case scenario really comes down to what McCarthy does behind the scenes, or if he ends up playing and is just not good. Um, so I true. don't think that'll, I don't think that'll happen. I don't want that to happen, but even then, like, I don't think there's a bad outcome this year because again, I'm not rooting for this. I don't think it'll be the case, but here's nuclear scenario. Vikings win three or four games and McCarthy either n- just never shows any sign of promise in practice or camp, or he goes out there out of desperation to make the fans shut up, and he's god-awful. We just pull an Arizona Cardinals, and we use a top pick next year to draft another quarterback. Yes, that's not good in the sense that we wasted this year's 10th overall pick, and it's not good in the sense it pushes back that window another year, but I mean, the Cardinals did it with Josh Rosen and then drafting Kyler Murray, and they had a few competitive years. They're a bit of a shit show now, but I wouldn't blame Kyler Murray on that. And again, I'm not what I'm not blaming or I'm not saying I think JJ McCarthy is going to be bad. I wouldn't be wearing him on my shirt if that was the case two weeks in a row. What do you mean um, by that? He's literally he's I'm wearing a shirt and he's oh, okay. on the shirt. That's it's it's yeah, not everything has some some weird ass secret meaning, Rev, despite that's your, not that's not where I took it. I know. Well, I was anyways, wondering where you took it. I am literally wearing a JJ McCarthy shirt. Oh, so, okay. yeah. But I mean, I think that's the worst case scenario. I genuinely think that, oh, well, nothing really good comes of this year and you hit the start over button at quarterback and you have a ton of cap space. I think there's maybe realistically less than a 1% chance of that happening. But if it does happen, then refer back to this and say, I totally called it. So true. Um, can I ask you a stupid question? Always down for one of those. Would it be really good or really bad if McCarthy develops well and Sam Darnold has like a Baker Mayfield resurgence? Would that be a good or a bad thing? That'd be an incredible I guess it, thing. I guess it'd be a great thing. You have two good quarterbacks, one with more experience and age. The other one is still under a team control contract for at least four years with the fifth year option. 
it's that is that's the best case scenario. You have two you go from having, you know, the concerns that you don't have a quarterback to having two really good ones and you're guaranteed yeah. to have at least one of them on the team next year. No, and worst great, case you get a comp pick. It would be a, it would be a great thing. It's what we call champagne thing. problems. Um yeah, and we got a lot of those. Um I'm just saying like Darnold, JJ McCarthy shows and we wouldn't be able to see it as fans. JJ McCarthy shows, "Oh, he's ready to go. He's going to light the NFL up." Oh, Sam Darnold just threw 35 touchdowns and eight interceptions. What do you do after this year? What do you, what like what do you Yeah, you offer Darnold a contract, probably one or two years. I'd uh, I'd I'd because again, I think the league has has look at the Case Keenum situation, look at things like that where you have these one year wonders and they get these massive deals. You know, even Gino, he he had that great year a couple of years ago. He's regressed a little since. He's not quite living up to that contract. Look at Daniel Jones, right? Teams will want to see consistency. I think with Baker, the reason he got something a little longer is just because he's throughout his college career and always shown glimpses of what he can do. Darnold's never really shown that. So I would say you try to get him back on a two year deal that with the first year fully guaranteed and second year optional. I don't think it hurts JJ McCarthy if he is developing well to keep developing. He's not going to regress by any means. I, I don't think, you know, so, so I, I don't see a, downside in that so sure i just think it's not a, there's not a downside to it i just think it'd be an interesting situation maybe or, yeah. you maybe you get rid of both of them and sign kirk cousins <sighs> you can't do that i know you can't do that shut up if you're about to i mean you could you, you could you could you could and honestly I've seen this franchise do crazier things like but, trade a first uh, round pick for Sam Bradford. I here's the thing. I may be in the minority here. I will defend that move based on the expectations. <laughs> hold on. Based on the expectations, based on what Sam Bradford could actually physically do when he was on the field. Um, the injury thing, of course, was a massive red flag and ended up coming to fruition. But when Sam Dar or Sam Darnold, Sam Bradford was on that field, he was letting it fly. Are you kidding me? Sam Darnold had one of the best quarterback. Whoa! Sam, I did the same thing. <laughs> Sam Bradford had one of the best quarterback performances I've ever seen from a Vikings quarterback that week one. Saints against or Saints. Packers? Yeah. Saints. Different. Saints. Both both of those were really, really good. God, but, he uh, had he had no aura though. He had zero aura. I don't he, to go to the equipment manager and say, I want you to add additional sleeve length. Ridiculous. He had to have done that. They don't make jerseys with that long of sleeves, I think. I don't know. Oh, it was weird. But as far as specific games, what's one or two games that you think are gonna be the most exciting? <laughs> um Atlanta is an easy pick, so I'm not I don't even want to count it. Um, I don't like the schedule so mid just from where the Vikings are. Like, there's nothing I'm excited to see. Hopefully, McCarthy versus Caleb Williams December 16th on Monday night. That would be cool. But, like, I guess the Jets game against Aaron, which I'm mad that game's not at the bank, it's in London. Kind of stupid to not have Aaron come back to the bank. No, like, I don't know. They, they should... For where the Vikings are at, there's just it's kind of hard to look at the schedule. Like I feel like in years past, we'd be like, "Oh, Niners on Monday night, sick. Oh, Packers week 17. Oh, Lions for the playoff implications and everything." But now it's just like, eh, well, maybe. to be fair, think of going into Monday night against the Niners last year. Given where we were, what it, how the season had started, and missing JJ, we were all going into that game, and you know whether right or wrong we all get the Kirk Cousins primetime panic, even though, like to your point earlier, we don't necessarily believe it, but it's just such a narrative you can't help but think of it, and we ended up winning. Sam Darnold knows their offense. Sam Darnold knows what they're going to do and can maybe help the defense. He's practiced against that defense. I don't know. I I'm not like sitting here being like, Sam Darnold beats the Niners, Like, but... 
mean, yeah, that, I'm going to that game, so I'm excited for it. But I'm ex- I would be excited in the sense of going to it and it being the home opener, but I'm not excited for it being. Uh, oh, we're probably gonna go seven and ten this year, and this is the seven and ten team playing the best team in the NFC. That I'm not that excited for. You know, I mean, we were competitive against this. What did the Lions end up with? Second seed <clears throat> last year. We were competitive against them with Nick Mullins twice. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't even that I just I don't think I don't think but I don't think the team got any worse. And I I think I, I will. Let me rephrase that. I don't think I think the team got better in a lot of spots. And I don't think quarterback compared to life after Kirk Cousins last year got worse. I don't think Darnold is going to be as good as Kirk, but I I think it's a better overall team than we saw in the second half of last season. It could and, be, but even if we're since we're talking about being excited for games like life after Kirk, I wasn't looking at games and being excited about them. So like I'm kind of at least that, now, yeah, yeah at like least I, for now, because again, like you and I, being the <clears> reasonable <throat> voices of the Vikings community, are saying like, chill a little bit, enjoy the ride. There's no mm-hmm. such thing as a bad outcome this season. You know, again, even that worst outcome is we just get another quarterback in the top three. Yeah, there's some downsides to that, but YOLO, that'd be fun. I don't want it to happen, but there'd be some reasons to enjoy that. Um, I would say, obviously, I'm going to the home opener, so I'm biased there. As far as just pure matchups, I mean, you're you already kind of shit on the Falcons idea, but I mean, that's just yeah. hard not to be excited about. I think Seattle will be interesting. I think that's a team that's in a similar spot and always just those Break road games game. in Seattle turn Break into, that but that's, but, but that's why is just those, those, that history and just how those games always end up being a unbelievably incompetent Vikings loss in a relatively competitive game. So Hopefully we break the narrative there. I just don't want to watch, you know, the, I don't like it because it's a Vikings game in Seattle. And just again, again, in a general sense, that history, I hate when we play in Seattle and it's on my birthday. So I like, I don't want to, I want to enjoy my birthday. I don't, I don't want to be turning 25 and I sit down at four o'clock Eastern and have to watch the Vikings by the Seahawks in Seattle. No, no, no happy birthday for you. I think the most interesting matchup taking whatever Sam Darnold may or may not be out of it is going to be week three against Houston. One, you have the Daniil and Diggs return. That was, that was widely reported to be the London game. So if I had Mm -hmm. to pick between the return of Diggs and Hunter at us bank or the return of Aaron Rodgers, I'd pick Diggs and Hunter Diggs left in 2020. He hasn't been back in, this will be five seasons since he's He's been at us bank. Yeah. He's never played, which is crazy to think about, but you know, him finally coming back. I think that matchup of that offense versus Brian Flores is going to be really really fun um i'm very excited to see what he throws at shroud who's obviously on the path to being an elite quarterback some may even say already is um how's he gonna handle that and again it's also grenard and cashman going against their former team and what are they gonna know about the tendencies they saw in practice and what are they gonna know about the defense that they could you know whisper in koc and west phillips ear like hey watch out for this you know it's got a lot of layers to it where i think that game's gonna be closer than people expect because both teams are have some inside knowledge of what the other team does well and and where to pressure them so true uh, you're, you got so many good points. I'm so proud of you. Um, you. The Texans game, that was reported, and I get, uh, this is a good transition to the Jets game. The Texans game was, I, I don't even want to say report, I'll say heavily rumored. Like we all just kind of at, almost Went assumed it. that was going to be the London. Because it, it sounded right. Like that just sounds like a London game. Um, but why did it have to be? Like it could have been the Colts or like – one of our other home games. Like, why did it have to be New York? I want Aaron to come back to U.S. Bank Stadium. And I guess it doesn't matter that much, but, like, 
We could have played the Cardinals. I should. We, well, I don't want to say we could have played Atlanta, and that wouldn't have made any sense. But Aaron will come know. back to U.S. Bank Stadium. No, no, no! Stop, stop. Brett Favre didn't play in Minnesota stop. as a Jet. It has to be exactly stop. the same. Stop. Brev, it has. Stop. This is this is the Lord's will. He can't let Aaron Rodgers play in Minnesota until he's in purple. Stop! You have to stop. Stop it. Get to stop. The, cons- the the script writers are very detailed. The consistency's there. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, we're ADHD again. Freedom. Bro, those did not look like cop cars. <laughs> Unmarked police cars and just yellow vests. I, I would have been confused as hell, too. Yeah, I'm just know. saying. Frick I'm just saying. Um, I would have I would have been extremely confused why these security guards were being so damn serious with me. So, that's wild. Anyways. Frick uh, I also forgot. Kevin O'Connell was, returns to LA. I hate that that's a Thursday night game because I really wanted to be able to come up with an excuse to go and like take a late night flight back to Phoenix from LA um, on a Sunday. But now that that's a Thursday game, I don't know if I want to take time out of my schedule at work to watch Puka run laps around our uh, our defense. Um. Yeah, I mean, well... In fairness, the last Thursday night game between the Vikings and the Rams is pretty fun. That was one of the more insane games I've ever watched, but that was also yeah. versus an extremely different Rams team at an entirely different location. I I know. I it was very different. Just I, I I know. I'm just I know. I'm just saying. It could be fun. Could be fun. I think Again, familiarity, even if it's been a couple years, like they're going to know the tendencies of the Rams. <clears throat> that offense has changed a lot, but Sean McVay, I I think a lot of his tricks and tendencies, Kevin's going to make sure B-Flow is in on, even though B-Flow's already really good at assessing offenses. I think that that will be one of those situations where the familiarity and tendencies will maybe keep the game closer than others might expect. Could. Could. Or could. we could just get nuked. It could. We could also get nuked. Could happen. Trying to think here. Uh, end the season. Last. Three of the last four division games. One at home against Chicago. One at home against Green Bay. And then on the road to end in Detroit. That'll be... That's... I... Is that? I think JJ McCarthy. Almost the last. Yeah, I think that's the last two games we ended with last year. Other than it was Green Bay at home, and then it was Detroit, but it was at. No, it was on the road. Yeah, they're they're getting lazy over here. Did we play Chicago? No, last time we played Chicago. Last time we played Chicago, Josh Jobs was still playing. I think it was the first week of December, Monday night, or last week of november or something like that mm. but dobbs was still playing mm. and he got benched in the oakland game or not oakland i always say oakland vegas game uh... yeah this that first really eight game stretch i'm just ignoring I don't, you yeah I'm... i who did we piss off man I don't know because yeah, just, it just uh. you have four real home games until November. Because and then sorry, you have three real home. three 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 real home games until November because the Jets don't count. And you have one home game on November third between October twentieth and December first. You like you're not at home a lot. <laughs> Oh, and this is the year where where we get the extra home game, quote unquote. Yeah, right. But December, that's four home games in the month of December. So that'll be those tailgate lots are going to be uh, needing to get the sh- the snow shuffled out quite often. I guess that is where uh, you do want your home games late in the schedule. So uh, like four out of your last six are at the bank. Hey, 
hard to be hard to be super mad at that. I guess I would say, looking at this, there's a real chance the start is a little rough when one or two games through October. And then you just go on a run and you're competing for a playoff spot towards the end of the yeah. year, right before two your two best teams in your division really take a crap on your hopes and dreams to end it. Yeah. There's a very realistic chance that happens. And if you look at the end end of the schedule, like we're gonna have two home games in January and then we're on the road in New Orleans in February, so Oh yeah. Yeah, that's true. Another rough. I love that being at the bottom, you know, just to get you start thinking ahead. And yeah. for those for those with ridiculously high expectations, let's keep them thinking about the Super Bowl. I Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is what is you are just you are just peak today in just repeating weird shit. I don't know where it's coming from. I am peaked in one way. Anyways, what game are you least excited for? Like, whether it's like just ungodly stupid matchup or is just going to be the cringiest football game you've ever watched? Probably, I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, I'm probably, I'd like, i probably Arizona. I feel like there's going to be a lot of incompetence in that game. Yeah. And that's what a couple weeks after COD comes out. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength. Probably got um, a double XP weekend. Some pre-order yeah. bonuses you're trying to really implement. So true. And I think a lot of Vikings fans are going to look at that game, understandably so, and be like, "Oh yeah, that's a win." It's it's not. There are no free the, wins on the schedule at all. Like that's fair. Yeah, I would say. Probably either I would say Jacksonville simply for the fact that I think the most boring matchup I'm still going to be excited for because it's the opening matchup of the season, which is like, I don't care who we play week one. I always look forward to week one, uh, but I think the Giants are by far the most boring matchup. I also think I also think there's a really good chance we look really good in that game and those with weirdly high expectations yep. get a little too excited um and a very good chance i start talking super bowl after we beat daniel jones by three points like Please i'm don't. i know myself Please. um i think that's a game that it, we i think we should win and i think if and when we do i think some people are gonna have some really high highs get knocked down by the next weekend um i think that's just a really really boring matchup it was a relatively boring playoff game and just with some weird crap happening um but i think probably jacksonville who knows what they're gonna be i, I kind of put tennessee in that conversation but also like will levis is fun to watch because he's like he's like a more extreme i don't want i don't know more extreme he has a little nick mullins in him but he's not as much all at once he can just be really bad, and if he's really bad, it stays that way. Or he can, you know, like his first game, throw four tutties and look like Brett Favre. So, like, I don't – I'm interested to see what version of him shows up, but I, I'd have to say probably Jacksonville. Um. Oh, my God. Did you speak – hey, Vikings Facebook dumpster fire of the week. We're bringing it back. Did you see the post about the Jacksonville game? It was going around on Twitter, too. No. Some guy, I don't know his name. I wouldn't share his name if I had it. Posted one of the Vikings Facebook fan group pages that he bought out the entire pool for the Jacksonville <laughs> game. That's awesome. And his quote was, we are going to be doing a lottery for people's right to buy tickets. <laughs> it is highly encouraged that you are a 20 to 30 year old woman. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my what a we're, what we're an so insane bad. what an insane move. I bought so out bad. an entire section, the pool section, and now I'm just letting random people join a lottery, but telling them, hey, if you're not a girl, you probably won't get it. Dudes rock. That is that they don't. Dudes rock so hard. That is wild. 
Looks like See, I snuck in. Me. I snuck in a, a segment from week one all the way, all the way. This, you know, what two, three months after our first episode, I just yeah. remembered that that was a Facebook post going around. But, uh, man, oh, um, yeah, preseason, boring ass preseason. Somehow, some way, we always end up playing at Philadelphia. Even if it has to be in the preseason, I guess. It's just required. Poor Kirk Cousins has to play them in week two in prime time again. Pussy. What? <laughs> I can't say that. I don't Sorry. know if you can say that. Oh. You're just you're I don't know. I don't know how the internet works. I don't mm. know how YouTube works. You're just throwing anything and everything out there to the Brev on the regular Vikes Now show and the Brev on Social Network are two entirely different people. Well, you know, we're a little bit more flexible on here. Not that we're not flexible on, uh, like, I'm, I'm just saying that maybe we bounce off each other a little bit more than I bounce off the people, other people on bikes now. So that was a sex joke. I, oh, like you know guys. when I when I jo- <laughs> Jesus, you are dude. Every week it's just you. Just oh my god, boy style. Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just looking at this schedule. I don't see anything like that. I think is going to be a barn burner, exciting matchup of the century. But then again, some of the games that have been that, like the Colts two years ago, nobody. That oh, yeah. not what anyone predicted anyways. And it's the Vikings, so there's going to be some fluky stuff that happens because there always is. Like, there's always... This team's... I think this team's going to be competitive in the majority of these games. I think they win a couple uh, upsets. I think DraftKings only had us favored in one of our first nine, if I remember correctly. I maybe... Don't yell at me if I got that wrong people in the comments who like to yell i uh i believe that's what i saw and i think the giants are favored by one simply because it's a home game for them but yeah i don't i don't really think that many of these teams especially with an improved defense are absolutely going to drop 50 on us no I uh they could anything can happen. Yeah, one or two of these games is gonna be like absolutely electric. But I mean other than that, that always have games they are. Yeah. All right, well, with that, I'm gonna make you provide Mm -hmm. some way too early certainty. Pick two games. Give me your lock of the year. There is no way in hell the Vikings are losing this game. And give me your upset pick of the year, where we beat a team that you don't think most people will have us pick pick to win. Upset. Mm. Upset week 18 at Detroit. <laughs> Lock <laughs> of the year. We are going to win this game no matter what. Atlanta Falcons. Kirk. Oh, Kirk. We're going to take you, Kirk, and we're going to show you what it's like to be a girl. We're going to take that little pretty smile of yours. Stop it. Gonna... Nope. Nope. Oh, sorry. This is no, going to but... get you in legal trouble. Lock of the year is uh, the Atlanta Falcons. You were getting a little Harrison Butker there for a second. I didn't say I wasn't going to let him not go out I of don't... the kitchen. I don't. Well, I don't know what you were implying, and I'm afraid to find out. Falcons. I do really think the Falcons. Oh, you said lock. lock you didn't say year. upset for them. Okay, but is week 18 against the Lions really an upset if they're already clinched a playoff spot? Yes. Because we're not going to be favored, no matter what. I mean, Even if we're going against Hendon Hooker? Okay, all right, good point. Uh, Upset of the year (laughs) is going to be... Detroit week seven. Detroit week seven. Yeah, Yeah, that's the one. (laughs) All right. I'm putting my bank account on it. Oh, yeah, 100%. Lock of the year. I'm going the easy route, and I'm going the route that's going to make this fan base go in two wildly directions, and I'm going to go with the Giants. Especially if they're wearing those god-awful jerseys. 
Mm. They do not. The universe cannot let them win. And I'm guessing they will because they're their 100th anniversary jerseys and they're opening the season at home. So Upset true. of the year. I am picking beating the Packers in Lambeau in week four because somehow, some way that mm. tends to happen and it's always this upset and Packers fans will gladly take our yearly Super Bowl win where we somehow split the series. Yeah. yeah. Pussies. That's my fr- Okay. <laughs> I just oh, never know the vibe. You're, I never know the vibe you're setting or like what? where your are. limits are. I mean, you are talking about our rival fan base, so I'll kind of allow that. I'll let that slide. I don't know. I don't know what the hell YouTube will say about it, but we've just you're just constantly testing the waters to see like what doesn't get flagged. But like slowly, it's like elevating bit pussies. by bit. <laughs> you're a pussy. Like I don't. I don't know what we're doing here. This will go over well if we have to do an appeal. Yeah. I'm sure that part will go over real well. Well, yeah. on that if note. If we get struck, we're pussy. Sorry. <laughs> but see, now the problem is if we get stroke, like, s- struck, like copyright struck we or something stroke? violation. We're going to get stroke together? <laughs> we're going to stroke sick. See, it's not intentional on my end, and yet it just keeps happening. But the problem know. is with that logic is is if we get a strike, nobody can come back to watch this video and hear you say that. So there's no accountability. No, they can. We just don't get paid. We just won't get our two dollars. That's what. I need that too, dude. I was gonna go to Taco Bell. I'm paying two dollars to call the people at YouTube pussies. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. I'll make two dollars. Like, does this include Google as well, or just yeah, YouTube? Google pussies? Packers fans, pussies. You, pussy. Lions fans, bigger pussies. Bears <laughs> fans, delusional pussies. I, like I, we, we Vikings hit, fans I, are the biggest I pussies in the NFL. Like I, I'm a pussy. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I don't. <laughs> There's no salvaging this. We've been the Skoshal Network. We'll be back next week, maybe? I'm not sure at this point. Brev just broke the record, I think, in a minute and a half. If you don't like this video, you're a pussy.